Hi, everybody. I'm Brittany Lewis with Forbes Breaking News. Joining me now is Molly McPherson, Forbes contributor and public relations expert in crisis management. Molly, thank you so much for joining me. Happy to be here, Brittany. A really interesting conversation that has been unfolding since January. Conspiracy theories regarding Kate Middleton's whereabouts, her health, and her marriage have been swirling for weeks after a series of bizarre events unfolded after the palace announced she underwent planned abdominal surgery. So to kick off the conversation, how do you think we got here? We got here because in crisis communication, clarity is king. And since the beginning, since January, with news of the announcement that Kate had planned abdominal surgery, the royal family, Kensington Palace, they have not been very open and transparent in their communications. Without that clarity, it's led to increased speculation and chatter. So when do you think was the exact moment that the story spiraled out of control? For those who might not be following as close attention to it all, give a brief timeline. First, in the beginning of March, there was that grainy photo of what appeared to be Kate and her mother in the car. Then there was the photo editing debacle on her Instagram. The AP did send out a kill notice for that. And then what appeared to be a photo of Kate Middleton and Prince William, but you could only see her side profile following up this weekend with a video of what once again appeared to be Kate Middleton and Prince William walking from a farmer's market. What was the exact moment that you believe the palace lost the story? Well, it depends on who you ask. Like if you're asking someone who works as a crisis communication strategist, they're going to tell you an earlier date, but for the public, it would probably be a much different one. For me, I noticed something was off from the very first statement. The fact that we hadn't seen Kate Middleton since Christmas and the news of a planned abdominal surgery uh, from an official media statement and with no other information for, for context, I thought that was somewhat suspicious. But I feel like the general public figured out that something was amiss was when the Mother's Day photo was revealed, as you said, uh, to be manipulated when press agencies put out a kill notice. In other words, saying that this is fake news, it's false information. That was the point that they truly, truly lost the narrative and control of their crisis. It was really the Photoshop fail that was heard around the world. But I do want to get back to that initial statement. I want to read it in part. They said this, Kensington Palace will therefore only provide updates on Her Royal Highness's progress when there is significant new information to share. What do you make of that? It's vague. Is that purposefully vague? What do you think they should have said? You're absolutely right, Brittany. It is a vague statement, but they were making a proclamation that they were not going to say anything. And that's the reason why it raised suspicions with me, because in any type of issue management, crisis management, you need to have consistent communication, particularly when it involves uh, Princess Catherine, the Princess of Wales, while King Charles is also going through a significant medical emergency. And there are other issues swirling around the royal family. Certainly that's going to put them in the spotlight. So just typically you always hear press from uh, the royal family. But now all of a sudden on one topic and a very important one, we have zipped lips. So that's where things started to go wrong for them. And it just got significantly worse. Speaking of zipped lips for Forbes, you wrote this, silence is seldom golden. Talk to us about that. Silence is seldom golden in crisis management. When something is happening, particularly in the public eye involving public figures, people are going to want information. People are going to crave information. Uh, news outlets want information as well. They want content. Social media provides content. If social media commentators and creators can talk about information that's already out there, they're going to be pushing out truthful, factual information. It actually helps you get through a crisis. However, in the absence of information, that's where you're going to get rumors or conspiracy theories, or really it's just speculation. People are interested and people want to know. When the news cycle meets social media, then you have issues. So silence, never golden in a crisis. Do you think that the royal family does have a responsibility to provide less vague updates here? Because they did say they pro we probably wouldn't see her fulfilling any official jobs capacity until after Easter. And it isn't Easter yet. 
That's true, but that is framing. And that's framing looking at timing for them. Essentially, they were just giving themselves time to not have to say anything. They were setting boundaries. However, another tell that things are not so good behind the scenes is they said, like you read in that first statement, Brittany, they said that there were not going to be any statements whatsoever unless something significant happened. Yet we heard from Kensington Palace again. Why? Because they were likely reacting to all of the chatter that was happening out there and news reports. And this isn't a regional story. It's not country specific. At this point, it's global. Everyone is talking about it. So the fact that they are they continue to maintain silence under the framing that they have a right to because of medical privacy, it's just problematic for them. For my feeds, at least, and I'm sure this is similar for a lot of people, you can't open any social media platform without the question, where's Kate? People slowing down the videos, people zooming in, people asking questions. And I want to get back to that farmer's market video that was released over the weekend. People still have questions. This actually did nothing to quiet conspiracy theories. It actually did the opposite. So the big question is, where's Kate? Couldn't they just put this to rest pretty easily by putting her out front, what do you think the solution is here? Well, Brittany, since I am a crisis communication strategist, my job is to look at intent. I wanna know what is behind the video. I think the question of is that Kate or not is not the question to ask. The question to ask is, why would they allow that video to go out in the first place? And the fact that it is grainy. It was released from two tabloids, The Sun and TMZ in the US. Um, also, there were questions, is this Kate Middleton or not? I mean, personally, I don't think it looks like her, but someone could argue that it is her. But again, I don't think it matters. I think it's curious that instead of just delivering us Kate on video, um, where there is no question, there is no doubt whatsoever that it is Kate, that would quell all of the chatter. But instead, they gave us uh, a, a video that's ambiguous, that would almost guarantee to create chatter and press. It almost feels like it was intentionally done that way to distract from other things that are happening um, at Buckingham Palace. That's really interesting that you say you think it's done intentionally. As a crisis communications expert, how do you think the palace can regain the narrative here, regain the public trust, and then essentially take control of the story back? That's a great question. And I've been asked that question numerous times, but the skeptic in me still thinks the reason why we're seeing the the media strategy play that we plays that we are is because there is something happening within the palace outside of Kate. There could be a bigger story with Kate, Kate and Prince William. Also, there's King Charles. There's just so many other things, not to mention the outliers of Prince Henry, Prince Harry and Meghan and Prince Andrew and, and being caught up in the whole Epstein scandal as well. They're dealing with a lot right now. So it almost feels as if these videos, and, and I look at them as red herrings, are put out there to distract from other things that are happening in the palace. Now, let's say it really is just a Kate issue. What they need to do at this point is truly be more transparent. They have to produce Kate. We have to see that proof of not just life, but proof that everything is okay with Kate. Yes, she absolutely, anybody has a right to their privacy, especially when it involves, you know, medical privacy. But at this point, they there are so many missteps behind this PR crisis that in order to protect the most valuable asset to them, which is trust, they have to do something and they have to do it soon. First, there were questions and speculation uh, swirling about her health, then her marriage. These are always private issues, but for Forbes, you wrote this, 10 effective communication tactics for balancing secrecy and disclosure. What do you think are some good ones in this situation? Yeah, well, when it comes to secrecy and, and disclosure, you know, I'm looking at it from a privacy point of view. There's going to be information that should not be private, but also the public has an expectation that it wouldn't be shared. And that is medical. It could also be financial. I mean, there's just a lot of areas that the public understands. But in this case, when we're talking about 
royalty. We're talking about a public figure. We're talking about a family that is supported by taxpayers in the UK. I mean, a lot of the chatter and a lot of the cries for more information is coming, you know, from the UK, you know, from Britain. So we can understand why more information needs to come out. So what they truly need to do and what anyone needs to do in that type of situation, it's about it's less about providing information, but managing expectation, telling people what they have a right to know, but explaining why they don't have a right to know um, other information. The royal family isn't doing it. They're simply just saying, we're not going to tell you. From the crisis communications lens, as you noted, as everyone knows, this is an international story. We're here in America talking mm -hmm. about it. What do you think is missing then from the international dialogue? From experience watching this crisis play out in real time and play out in the press and play out in social media, I can spot the missteps, you know, step by step, because it's almost daily that the royal family is putting out uh, new narratives into the mix, uh, whether they come from unnamed sources with the palace, or it might be a video, or there could be just dialogue. Uh, there's a, a case even today where it's been revealed that there's been a breach in uh, Kate Middleton's uh, medical records, which actually happened before, but we're hearing the news about it today. It's those types of narratives that tell me that there is a plan. It's a loose plan. It's not a well thought out plan at all, but it also seems like a very reactionary plan. They're reacting to what the public is requesting. That is backward in terms of how you manage a crisis. You need to own your crisis. And what that means is you plan it and you listen to what the sentiment is out there, but it also means accountability. And that is the one thing that is missing from this entire royal response. There is no accountability whatsoever for the photos or for, you know, not providing information or for information. Simply, we're hearing a lot of things from Prince William or friends of Prince William or the palace that we have a right to privacy. And that's well past the expiration date. Speaking of other dates, uh, what is on your radar for next? Aside from that Easter deadline, should we be looking out for any news from the palace until then? I am looking at media moves at this point. You know, I'm finishing up an article on uh, Kate Middleton and the royal family debacle, looking at the red flags that we've been spotted. Honestly, for me, and I think for a lot of other people, they're looking for red flags. They're looking for the red herrings that the royal family is putting out there. They're looking for the missteps. I think people will be genuinely shocked if they do something that is transparent. And as far as April 17th um, is concerned, that information was dropped to us a, just the day before we saw the video of a person who looks like, you know, Kate Middleton walking through the farmer's market in Windsor. She certainly looks like she could be revealed. I mean, certainly one can assume that the royal family had something to do, you know, with that, you know, tabloid video coming out. So she looks certainly healthy enough to do that. So it will be curious um, to see if she doesn't come out, then that would absolutely indicate that there is significant trouble behind the scenes. Molly, as the situation develops, I hope you come back on and join me. Break it all down. Molly McPherson, thank you so much for joining me. Thanks so much, Brittany.